skew, grow, and divide, that will result in a steady state distribution. Yeah. Regardless of I think we should, we should go on up to the last stuff. Maybe you better announce the title. Uh, uh, I'm going to describe our exploration of uh, the transitions to multicellular life of the simplest sort, together with uh, Sherry Zhao, Kevin Dotti, uh, Amherst Fishmuth, and uh, Bradley Webster. I've been using the same system that Simon introduced us to the uh, dictocelium system in order to try to find uh, things that would be appealing to a physicist in the way of uh, transitions to multicellular life. In this kind of conference many years ago, we would, might be studying liquids. Uh, but the excitement of studying uh, cellular matter that's sparse, as I'll describe to you, is we're not exchanging Casimir forces or electrostatic forces, we're exchanging messages. Uh, we can also create very interesting situations. We can put ourselves into all kinds of environments just by simply doing what biologists have done forever. But furthermore, we can see the things. We look under a microscope and look at objects that are 10 microns big. We can do the kinds of things that, uh, well, people would, dream, would just dream about doing, say, studying liquid structure. So I'd like to tell you two quick stories about simple transitions in multicellular life. One's an old story. It deals with the dictocelium system, the social amoeba system, after it's been starved. And this is a challenge for survival, is to form a genomic lifeboat. All these cells uh, try to get together in order to uh, create something that will give them a happier place to be. So the challenge is on a substrate to bring together a bunch of cells. Now there have been earlier work in which it's been elegantly modeled in terms of excitable media. Uh, and, and to do this kind of, and solutions have been come out in the form of spiral excitation patterns, which resulted in the, when I say excitable, I mean the production of a signaling molecule, the reception of that signaling molecule. But I'd like to put it, the system into a more challenging situation. Instead, think of some situation which is very sparse in density. And so a continuum model wouldn't be appropriate at all. Uh, as a further challenge, as a physicist, I'd like to do something that would drastically alter the signaling channel that these uh, uh, cells are using. And what I'll do is physically change the thickness of the layer that they're using to communicate. It's like changing you know, the cable to wireless or whatever in, in order to communicate. Well, to make a long story short, we found that these, these could be a very effective thing to do. We also had to develop theory to go along with this, because now that we're looking at this uh, sparse system, it's much better to look at it from the point of view of a bunch of randomly coupled, collective, uh, coupled oscillators and try to understand how randomly this thing might start up the synchronization. The synchronization of these oscillators is what we take as the first hallmark of collective life. Um, and that's the signature we look for. The main highlight is we found a focusing effect as we deduce, as we deduce the thickness of the communication layer. Uh, there are other stories to tell as well, but I'd like to switch to an even more elegant and simpler one. And that is, imagine not in the star system, but in a, a system that we have plenty of food for the, for the thickness of it, and we're watching it grow up. As a cell biologist, you learn how to culture cells. And one of the first things you learn is you have to have a minimum density of cells in your culture in order to have exponential growth to provide cells for your experiments. And as a physicist, I was really fascinated by well, what's all this minimum density stuff? Is there some, is there some, there must be some kind of collective effect if there's a minimum density, or at least that's the thought I had to begin with. Well, we, we've explored this kind of, uh, this behavior. Now, in contrast to these, uh, for, uh, moving around on a substrate, this is a thoroughly mixed system. And we're, we feel, we've done experiments that are what are called condition media experiments, and we've also done experiments where we vary what's called a Peclet number to check for the possibility of a, of a molecule that might be diffusing between cells or being transported between cells in a shaken system. And we've decided that that doesn't exist. There's some, if there are no soluble growth factors. Instead, we think that there is a, critic, there is a transition from slow growth to fast growth, this lag to log transition that the biologists report. And we think it's due to mechanical collisions between cells. And, uh, and being, uh, following the chemical engineering literature, we had ideas about it and, and could produce a theory. More recently, we re-examined this kind of system in the limit that, again, appeals to a physicist because we're going to the exciting limit of the very low densities. At very low densities, that's where the action is occurring. At higher densities, it's simple exponential behavior. And so we're asking what kind of things will turn on or turn off the, the communications that we think are occurring between these cells. And uh, the story is a lot of experimental work, and I invite you to check out our website and, and read all about it. So, thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank all the speakers very, very much. Thank you. Uh, have a nice trip back. Have a nice holiday. Happy New Year. And see you at the 100th Earth next May. Thank you, George. <laughs>